The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship. Wherever you are on your journey of faith, Christ meets you here. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we have come together to dedicate this church building for the worship of Almighty God and for the building up of the body of Christ. From this day forward, let it be a place for the gathering of the people of God, a place for proclaiming the gospel through word and sacrament, a place for bringing life and hope to us and to this community. Let us pray. Holy God, whom the heavens cannot contain, we give you thanks for the gifts offered that built this house of prayer to your glory. We praise you for the ways it will be used to open people to your holiness. And we pray that all who seek you may find you and be filled with your joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. At this time, if I could have the council members, please come forward. Bishop Larry. Ooh. If you'll join me right here, sir. Alright guys. I know it's social distancing, but grab the ribbon. <laughs> uh, what an amazing day. Let's cut guys. One, two, three. time of confession and forgiveness as we open our hearts to God. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love, and in your great compassion, blot out our defenses. Blot us through and through from our wickedness, and cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Do not cast us away from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from us. God hears our confession and restores us to the joy of salvation through his Son, Jesus Christ, and sustains us with the gifts of grace and forgiveness through his bountiful spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and at all places offer thanks and praise to you, Holy Father, through Jesus Christ, our high great priest, in whom we are built up as living stones of a holy temple, that we might offer before you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name, joining their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God, of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he betrayed our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he took bread. He broke it, he gave thanks, and gave it to those to eat, saying, This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he had taken the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to all the drinks. And this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, 
to glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. 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 The body of Christ given for you.
rise as you're able. you have made. Open our ears to hear and listen to your life-giving word. Open our minds to understand your love for us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Open our hands to serve that our neighbors may know your love in action. Open our church to all so that we are gathered and sent in your holy name. Open our hearts to worship as we come into your presence with thanksgiving in our hearts. Let us pray. God of all peoples, we pray for peace in this house of worship and all who enter here. Together we give thanks to you and seek your blessing as we gather in this dwelling and pray for those who make it their spiritual home. As we preach your word and administer the sacraments, may we rejoice forever in the grace and salvation you bring through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to read responsively with me Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. 
Good indeed is the Lord, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from age to age. Our next reading from Scripture today is from Ephesians, the second chapter. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who are far off and peace to those who are near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Here ends the reading. I invite you to stand as you're able. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus is speaking here and he says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell. And great was its fall. Then when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Chris Bayak writes with a few modifications of my own, uh, the greatest building. When you think of great building projects, what typically, typically comes to mind? We might think of great buildings that were built centuries ago that still stand today. The Kremlin was built 500 years and was an architectural marvel for its day. The Great Wall of China, as we know it today, was built in the 15th and 16th centuries and is over 4,000 miles long. The main construction of the Taj Mahal took 20,000 workers 11 years to build, and the whole project spanned 22 years. Sometimes these projects took several decades to complete. Herod's temple, the one destroyed in 70 AD, took over 80 years to build. Construction on St. Peter's Basilica began in 1506. It was not completed until 109 years later in 1615. June 6th of 2019, ground broke 
for Martin's Lutheran Church and on August 21st, most of the building project was completed. <laughs> but as spectacular as any of these are in the eyes of man, there is one building project that far eclipses all of them. Its design is so spectacular that it could be drawn by even the best architects. It has been under construction not for decades or centuries, but for millennia, and it is still not finished. Its size is not mere acres or square miles, but it encompasses all parts of the earth. What is more amazing is that this building has no steel, no bricks, no concrete, no windows. Its construction is very unique. The precious stones, living stones. Unlike all of these other projects, this building will not fade with time. In fact, it will endure forever. What is this greatest of buildings? It is the church, God's master project. And my friends, you are all part of it. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It is really a monumental day for our congregation and for our community to have this, this beautiful facility that God has indeed blessed us with. We know that we left 602 Martins, or I should say 602 Second Street, our old Martins building that served our congregation for 80 years and did so many things in ministry that you can't count. That's our hope and dream for this building at 502 Martins Avenue. Isn't that fitting? Martins Avenue. Really kind of cool. But the reality is, is throughout this whole building process, each and every step of the way, we were told one thing. Well, this sure isn't very good ground to build on. And I disagree. The soil itself may not be great. But the cornerstone in Christ himself, who is here throughout this entire building project, will not and would not let it fail. No way, no how. He is the foundation of who we are as the church in this marvelous building that we have been given. Every day that I would come and walk through different areas and pieces of this building project, and you'll hear more about that in my presentation later. But I would pray. I would pray for each component and each step of this process, and I hope that you did too. And I hope that as we continue to move along in the years ahead, that you continue to pray and give thanks to God for this, this house of worship that we dedicate today to him, not to us but to him, because it's his design. It's his creation. It's his gift to us, his people. The foundation of this church solely rests on the shoulders of the great I am that came to save us all. His name is Jesus Christ. And we can never, ever forget whose we are and who what we do for. It is not us that do anything. It is him that does everything through us. Martin's Lutheran Church. For that we have to give thanks. And praise for what we have been given. We are an amazing congregation. We do amazing work to spread his gospel and his love to the world. I'm going to tell you, it goes far. 
I know that there are people in California that watch our services. I know there's people in Arizona. I know there's people in Florida. I know there's people in Missouri that give thanks and praise for what? That together we make up the body of Christ and do this thing called church together to make it all possible. We are one of 194 congregations that make up the Eastern North Dakota Synod. It's up to us to let that light shine in our area and those who come into our house to feel loved, to feel support, to feel welcome. My friends, you have done that. I've seen that for the last four and a half years. And as we enter into this new home, that we make that grow even further. When people come in to this place and they're seeking refuge, they're seeking mercy, they're seeking grace, remember that we are built on a rock. And with that rock comes shelter and support for those who come and enter in. We are to be that love to that neighbor who needs assistance, that neighbor that needs support. That's what we've done. That's what we continue to do. That's why Martin's continues to thrive over and over and over again. Why? Because as a community, as a congregation, we are not afraid to share Christ's love for all of his people. If you look all through our history of pastors that have served this place, I would tell you that they felt the love of this community and they helped share in that love for many, many years. Martin's is a great church. But we have to remember, it's not ours. It's his. The rock on which we are built, the rock who guides us, needs to lead us forward from this day forward and forevermore. Because God has great plans for us if we just follow his lead. Thanks for coming today. Amen. And thanks be to God.
I invite you to stand as you're able as we continue with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with a time of prayer. Confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we may lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick. Especially this day, Lord, we offer to you in prayer, Brian, Lindsay, Betty, Wendy, Ruby, Paul, Oral, Mike, Pete, Karen, Susan, Jesse, Pearl, Barry, Robert, Dean, Sheila, Jillian, Ellen, Todd, and Mel. And any of those that we name aloud before you now or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of community, we give you thanks and we call on you to rejoice in hope, to be patient in suffering, and to per persevere in prayer. We pray that you would make our congregation of Martins a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation and help us to overcome evil with good. We continue to pray for our members, and this day we lift up and pray for Ben, Josh, Debbie, Harriet, Keith, Sarah, Tatum, Jersey, Brax, Eric, Carrie, Kaylin, Colin, Kelsey, Mitch, Carissa, Aubrey, Austin, and Margaret. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. In love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the sure and certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our dedication. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. Your gifts are many, and in wisdom you have made all things to give you glory. Be with us now and bless us as we dedicate this building to give your praise and honor. Give us joy in all your works and grant that this new facility may always be a place where your will is done and your name is glorified. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Accept this baptismal font that has been given new life, that we offer now with thanksgiving. May it draw us to your word and remind us of your promises. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Accept these windows that have been given new life in the digital sign out front that we offer with thanksgiving. May they remind us of Christ, the light of the world, the light that no darkness can overcome. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Accept this sound equipment and these projectors that we offer with thanksgiving. May they increase our vision of God's glory and surround us with the experience of your goodness as we worship you in spirit and truth. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Accept the crosses that we offer with thanksgiving. May they be signs of your son's hope and salvation through his triumph over death and all that seeks to destroy us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Accept this altar, pulpit, and lectern that have been given new life that we offer with thanksgiving. May they be used in reverence and love, giving honor and glory to your name through the beautiful gifts of grace you have first given us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Accept this piano, keyboard, and drum set that we offer with thanksgiving. May they fill us with your joy and peace, ushering us into your presence with praise. Thanks be to God. You have enriched our lives with every good and perfect gift. You have commanded us to share your life-giving word with all the world. Bless us in this place and bring us to your perfect kingdom where you live and reign as our holy and triune God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, also with, with you. you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with those nearby. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. Uh, at this time, we'll hear some very, very special music uh, from our bell choir. How majestic uh, is your name?
I mean, it was fun when I was in elementary school, and the thing developed that they recess is over or something like that. But that's about as far as you're going to get me, Karen. Sorry. Uh, thank you guys so much for that. Uh, so lots of announcements to get to be, uh, before we enter into our short program. But uh, the first one is uh, first community classes uh, will be on September 9th. Uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, please call the church office uh, to let us know if you're coming. Uh, and then First Communion will take place at our worship service uh, on September 13th uh, at 9.30. Again, I want to remind everybody that when we have communion that day, the only ones that will have communion in the sanctuary at the altar rail uh, will be our First Communicants. Uh, everybody else will receive communion as you exit the facility. And then also to announce the confirmation classes and our program, all that sort of thing, will hopefully be starting in September. So we are having a parent-student meeting on September 16th at 7 o'clock. Uh, confirmation is for 6th to 11th grade. And again, just come with your questions and we'll have our layout of what our schedule should look like and uh, all of our ways to be flexible through these times. Uh, another thing that happened uh, to shut us down just a little bit is new members. Uh, and so we'll have our new member uh, gathering meeting on October 6th at 6 p.m., uh, new member Sunday. Uh, will be October 11th at 9.30. Uh, again, please contact Tasha Keith, myself, or the church office if you would like to attend uh, and become a member of Fontana well, Bias, this really magnificent congregation. <laughs> and again, we're uh, taking a little extra time with the Sunday School Program. Um, so we said Sunday, October 18th, that's the day that we'd like to um, have to get our plan together as to what that would look like. Um, but in between time, you may still try a few things, a little bit like we did with UBS. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. But otherwise, have October 18th on your calendars for Sunday school. So these two sets of flowers here, uh, we bought them uh, as a congregation to celebrate uh, our new uh, building and dedication and opening. Uh, but the flowers that you see there next to pa uh, Bishop Will Robbie, uh, they uh, are from Pastor Cody and Harvest Plains Church. Uh, they say congratulations on your new building. We pray that God will use it to his glory and that it will serve as a light in this community for generations to come. So thank you, uh, Pastor Cody and Harvest Plains for that wonderful gift uh, on this uh, on this day. Well, so do you have any other announcements? I was just thinking, I mean, this dedication was great. I mean, we see the signs and symbols of our church coming together in such a beautiful way um, and that dedication to God. Um, I also think this specifically the parking lot is pretty awesome. <laughs> um, I mean, just the access to the building that we have that we didn't have before, that's right. a wonderful gift uh, to have some ministry happen even I, there this morning. I mean, only a few people I saw walking across the street that they lived there. So nobody has a park on the street today. That's pretty awesome. So, are there any other, other announcements for the good of the congregation before we uh, enter into our program? Seeing none, did you have one real quick? Next Sunday, Karen Koff, you can contact her if you would love to. I mean, this is a lot of fun, guys, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know, you, you can do that, she'll teach you the rest. I promise, she can make that happen. Uh, so if there are no other announcements, um, it's my pleasure to introduce to you uh, our interim bishop of uh, Eastern North Dakota. Uh, I have known, actually, Bishop Walrabi uh, since I served in Cooperstown when we did first call theological events mm. and stuff together. It was the first time that I got introduced to you. Uh, when Bishop Brandt uh, decided that he was going to leave early, uh, Bishop Walrabi was nice enough to, to step in to be our interim bishop. Uh, from this time, and it hasn't been easy going through a bishop election process uh, and COVID, uh, and you thought you were going to retire a little early, like, I don't know, maybe June, and so November is not that far away. No, not. <laughs> so uh, with all that, please welcome Bishop Larry Walrock. Dear friends in Christ, don't you love that new church smell? <laughs> Thank you so much for the kind invitation to be with you and to share in the joy of this day as we begin to dedicate this new lovely church building to the glory of God. And I need to tell you that uh, even though I was to have been done by now, I'm happy I'm here to be with you. 
uh, today, and it is an honor to represent all your brothers and sisters in Christ of our Eastern North Dakota Synod, some 90,000 disciples who serve God through 194 congregations across the 22 counties of Eastern North Dakota. So I greet you not just from little old me, but from all of them today, and I also want to thank you for all the ways that you bear the light of Christ, not only here in the greater Castleton area, but as you join in prayer and generosity with your fellow ELCA church members to make Christ known throughout this whole region and across our world. When former Bishop uh, Terry Brandt was with you himself just a little over a year ago for the groundbreaking, he reminded you of something you've already heard a few times today and may hear a couple more times, and that is that the church is not a building, but that Martin's Lutheran Church is you, the people of God, the community of believers who gather regularly for praise, fellowship, learning, and outreach. And I must say, what a beautiful, uh, functional, historically uh, remembering <laughs> uh, all the ways you've recycled parts of your previous buildings. What a beautiful and lovely facility and a center for mission, as Bishop Terry told you last June. You have this now to do the vital work God has given you. Our Bible includes only one story about the dedication of a house of worship, and it is told in 1 Kings chapter 8, and you might want to go home and read the whole chapter. You probably have never heard it before because it contains King Solomon's prayer of dedication for the first temple of the Jewish people in Jerusalem that took, building committee, listen up, 20 years to build. Finance committee, please listen, at the cost of at least $20 million dollars in today's currency. And this amazing dedication prayer of King Solomon, which I encourage you to read on your own, it has three points that I want to leave with you. First of all, Psalm's dedicatory prayer acknowledged right off the bat that God didn't really need the temple or any other house. God doesn't require our shelter, and no building, certainly no building, can contain God. Second, Solomon's prayer recognized that if God didn't need the temple, uh, the people of God, people like you and me, creatures of time and space, we need a place on earth where we can make contact with our gracious God. You and I need edifices like this, and God is happy that we have them and that we cherish them in his name. And third and finally, Solomon's prayer went even farther to observe that if insiders like us need a place of worship, our neighbors all around us, even those who may not share our particular faith, our neighbors also need to know where to turn when they need hope and comfort and a sense of purpose. In other words, this church building may be our sanctuary, but it is our neighbor's beacon of hope. And I am wanting to commend you on all the ways you are reaching out to your neighbors and growing by numbers in this time and place. So, as I said earlier, maybe you caught me, uh, you heard me say, we begin to dedicate this church building today I'm saying it that way because, you see, I trust that from here on in, we will all continue to dedicate this structure to the glory of God as we live into it and through it, and as we gather again and again and again, every time we do that, we will be rededicating this amazing building to the glory of God for the prayer and praise and worship of God's people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Mr. Clark. Uh, at this time, our council president, Mr. Brock Leeds. Uh, 
Bishop Orabi and, and Pastor Mike. So uh, none of us got together today and uh, coordinated our speeches, and we probably should have because you're going to get tired of hearing a lot of the same things. Um, but I think it speaks to really the, the bigger picture. So we really are here today um, to dedicate and celebrate uh, what we have accomplished as a congregation. But we're not here to celebrate a building. We're here to dedicate a building, certainly, but we're here to celebrate Martin's Lutheran Church and, and what Martin Lu Martin's Lutheran Church is. And as you've heard earlier, I said it at the groundbreaking, you've heard it today, um, the building is not the church. The building is a tool for us to continue our ministry. And, and because of all of your efforts, we're going to be able to do that in a wonderful facility that's going to meet our needs now and into the future. I was just telling Karen a little bit ago, there's 306 people in here, and it does not feel remotely full. Remember 306 people a year and a half ago? Um, we were setting up chairs in the back and trying to figure it out. It's, it's just going to be such a wonderful uh, place for us to worship. And as we uh, dedicated some of the pieces, we really tried hard uh, as, a, as building committees, design committees, council, to preserve some of our history, and you see that around you. You see the stained glass windows. You see the crosses that we have. You see... Uh, the pieces up here. We really tried to preserve our history, but also bring a sense of newness and growth, which is really part of a vibrant community, a vibrant church, and, and shows uh, the growth that can happen. So we hope that we've delivered a church that you can be proud of, not only now, but in, into the future. So as I said, it's a great day for celebration, and really we're celebrating um, the culmination of years of preparation to get to this point. Um, and many of you will remember some of these marquee times. It, this did not start on June 6th of last year when we broke ground. And this project did not start in October of 2018 and we came around and you opened your homes to us to do the cottage visits and really talk about the commitment and dedication that, that we were going to need to make this happen. And it didn't start in April of 2017 when the council at that time said, let's put together, uh, we had a, people from the Mission Investment Fund come in and we talked about, let's put together a, a building committee and a finance committee and a communications committee and find out, is this possible? And we did a congregational survey at the time to find out what do you want? Um, none of it started then. Um, the truth is, this started when the congregation and the leaders at that time on your council purchased the land that is now Martin's addition in 2003 to really have the vision of what the future was going to be, to help a community grow, not just a congregation grow. And at that time, 17 years ago, let's face it, it started before then. There was the Mission 2000 that said, what do we want to be as a congregation and a community? And the purchase happened uh, in, in 2013, and today is the culmination of all that planning and all that effort and all that commitment. And although we're here today, to celebrate and dedicate a new facility. Um, let's remember, Martins has experienced tremendous change over that period of time, right? We've had lots of staff turnover. We've had uh, fluctuations in our membership. We've had all kinds of growth. But what has not changed is the dedication and commitment that this congregation has shown not only to this church, but to this community as a whole. And you've continued to uh, give of your time and talents and be dedicated to the growth and ministry, um, not only of our community, but really uh, of each other. And for that, we cannot thank you enough. In a moment, um, Pastor Mike and I are going to take some time to uh, toss the baton back and forth and do some very specific thank yous. Um, but before we do that, uh, I, I want to make sure we understand this concept that uh, you heard it in the song, we are the church. And I would take it, I, if I could rewrite that, I would say it different. You are the church, each and every one of you. So let's think a little bit about, um, is there anybody here that was involved in the Mission 2000 when we decided to do that? If you, if you were involved in that process, stand up. We're going to stand, stay standing. People who remember what it took, right, to decide to make this purchase over 20 years ago. Um, any former council members, if you've ever served on the church council of Martin's Lutheran Church, please stand up. 
If you've ever been in a lead, everybody stay standing, been in a leadership role here in Martins, given of your time, volunteered, being a part of that. Any committee members, and I'm not talking just the committee members of this project, but if you've served on service groups and any committee work, any volunteer effort that you've done in Martins in your time here, please stand up. Cheerful giving has been a huge part of this program. People have come to us and said, you know what? Um, I may not be able to give a gift, but I can give of my time and talents. I can give of resources that I have otherwise. If you've been involved in any of those efforts, please stand up. Any volunteers and donors to this project, right? I'm going to steal a line now from Pastor Keith and Pastor Mike, and I'm going to tell you, all rise. Rise if you're able, all of you. And there's a reason for this. No matter what you think you have or have not done, no matter how big or small that gesture might be, you are all part of this and got us to this day. So look around. Not at the walls, not at the stained glass windows. Look at your family, look at your friends, look at your community, right? You are the church. You are Martin's Lutheran, not the building. The building allows us to do this ministry, but you are the ones that have continued to give of yourself to make this happen. And you've had every reason to say no. Over the past two years, you've had every reason in this community, as the school did a bond issue that asked for your financial resources and raised your property taxes, as we increased the partnership of this community and increased sales tax to help pay for some of the items that we're doing, as we came into your homes and asked you to give your resources, you had every reason to say no, but you didn't. You said yes, and that's because of your commitment and dedication to Martin's Lutheran and to the community of Castleton, and for that, we will forever be thankful. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. You guys can be seated. So until the council uh, can figure out what we're going to do, uh, please call us in the church office and tell us when you want to come help clean. Uh, we'll have checklists of everything that needs to be done uh, so that we're good. Uh, so, but I want to talk about the process uh, that I got to be part of and see um, as being your senior pastor in, and through the call process. Uh, in all reality, uh, you, many of you have heard this uh, and said, but in November of 2015 was my first trip uh, to Castleton uh, that didn't involve the Dairy Queen, the Pizza Ranch, uh, or, or anything else. It was to interview to be your senior pastor. And the first place that Mr. Scott Koss took me was literally right across the street where I can see right now and he pointed over to this empty lot, and he said, Mike, this is where we want our future home to be. Four and a half years later, I'm glad to announce that we have that dream that has come true, uh, which is truly amazing. In that time, part of this land, if you remember, when you bought this land in 2003, it wrapped from right here all the way around the school. So where the softball field sits today, that was Martin's land. We sold 11 acres of land to the school that has helped in the financing and purchase of this facility. Back when you had the vision, Brock, that you talked about of before, many of you continued to give towards that future home that you thought was going to take place. Without those continuous gifts, that you had, we wouldn't have had the base to make this dream 
a reality uh, with your funding. Yes, in April of 2017, uh, the council did a, a look at staffing and ministry, and, and through that, what do we have? Well, we have Pastor Keith, thanks be to God. Without him during this process, I literally probably would have had to check into some facility uh, in, in some regard. And you said, hey, we want, we want to do something with the building, whether that is modifications or a new facility uh, within, within that process. We did form those committees, um, and Brock and I will talk about those. But Jenny, now you can start the slides. Um, I want to take you back, if you remember this day, uh, when, uh, when we broke ground uh, on, on June 6th. There were a lot of things that were going on and taking place uh, at, uh, at that time that were happening within our community. Uh, the school was getting modified, and, uh, and little did we know that COVID would hit us uh, when, we, when we struck ground uh, that day in all reality. And now, Jenny, if you'll just slowly go through the slides, or sorry, Nate, if you'll slowly go through the slides, i uh, just take your time. That is literally the first pour of concrete for our foundation uh, in this building. When I say that I literally walk this land and I walk these, these, these steps day in and day out, I tried to capture everything that took place, the first pieces of steel that went up into the building and its formation of what we get to call our church home. When I, when I welcome people in to the building and get their first reactions and seeing tears that come from their eyes, everything is completely worthwhile in what we have done. Have there been bumps in the road? Absolutely. We had more moisture here that you could shake, shake a stick at. And guess what? When we build that solid foundation, no matter what, with that cornerstone on our side, we were able to accomplish and do completely and 100% amazing things. We sold our old building to the Loy family as they used that as a Christ-centered uh, facility uh, within our community, coordinated with multiple, multiple groups, and we will recognize them to figure out everything that we needed for this facility. What would come with us? What would stay and remain in the old building? And what we needed anew. We had a temporary home. Literally, we were homeless for a week, but we were still homeless, and we worshiped in the school. Thank you to the Central Cast School Board and school for allowing us to worship as a community together. It was amazing to use, but it's sure good to be home in all reality. So... There are some things that I want to thank, or people that I want to thank. And when you get to the last side that says thank you, you can stop there. Um, but the first person that I'm going to thank, and he's going to get mad at me, um, and that's quite okay. Um, in, all, in all fairness, uh, for, um, one would say, the last 18 months, uh, and this is not an exaggeration, I think, by any stretch of imagination, on personal phone calls uh, of taking his time. Uh, Brock, dude, I love you more than you could ever know. Um, and what you have done for our congregation and for me personally uh, is out of this world. Uh, no shorter than, than three to four to five hours uh, a week, uh, we would have phone conversations about some part uh, of this building process. And uh, we can't thank you enough as a congregation, and I can't thank you enough as your pastor for what you have done for us. So I think we need to give Brock a huge round of applause. Thanks, buddy. So with that, we have a bunch of people that we need to thank, uh, and then some. Um, and so I, I'll, I would like to start, if I could, with the council, sure. okay? Um, and as I read your name, if you would please stand uh, to be recognized, uh, if you will. Uh, Pastor Keith Waka, uh, Brock Leeds, 
Wendy Mensing, Scott Cost, Melissa Grumish, Jerome Crandall, Todd Erickson, Stacy Link. These are our current uh, council members. Uh, our past council members, I went back to the beginning of what I call this project, uh, in, uh, where we started April of 17 mm -hmm. uh, within that realm. And so, uh, if you will, uh, Gail Richter was part of that group. And if you notice inside our boardroom, inside the conference room, there is a cross dedicated uh, to Gail uh, that, uh, that her parents and Todd uh, and uh, the girls bought for this facility. Take a look at that uh, and thanks be to God for that. Mr. Mark Hackman, Mr. Rod Brecken, Steve Link, Wade Christensen, uh, Julie Nelson, Jess Tope, and of course we can't forget our office manager, Joan Carvel, uh, with all the work and dedication that you guys have put in uh, to this new facility. Thank you for your time and your service uh, to our church that we call Martins. Right, don't sit down yet, group. Um, I, I would like to echo and, and really get people to understand. I appreciate the thanks, but it, it's not about me. It's about the team that put this together. And, and this council, yeah, they didn't sign up for four hour meetings and two to three hour meetings a month. And, we have, they have put time and energy into this project that is uh, far beyond what any volunteer could be asked to do and should be asked to do, but they show up every time we have a special meeting. Stacy, special meeting, right? Yep, right. Um, they're not special anymore because they happen really frequently, but again, thank you for the time, and, and when you get an opportunity to thank them personally, I encourage you to do so because we have asked a lot out of our volunteers uh, specifically on this project, so thank you all for your leadership and guidance. Uh, our next group uh, will be the building committee. Do you want to read that? Sure, I left my uh, program down there. So, yes, yeah, so our building committee, and, and this is really the initial committee that we set up uh, when we put this together back in 17 and established all of the committees. We, we do have a design committee we'll talk about later. So uh, the building committee, uh, Mike Jacobson, you'll see these in, in your program. Uh, please rise. Stacy Holdmeyer, Bob Christensen, Wayne Oberlander, Jim Marschke, Rod Brecken, Mark Hackman, Evan Anderson, George Blank, Merle Myers, Ardeen Myers, and Teresa Gullison. So that's the committee that really started the process of bringing uh, contractors to the table, really looking at what do we need for square footage, interviewing all the different groups that we had here to really determine what do we need. And that group put in a great amount of time and effort and brought uh, to the table to council, both a design, uh, a building uh, concept, as well as uh, contractors for us to interview. So thank you all for your time and energy in putting that together. Um, of course, with any building committee, you need people that are going to uh, work on getting funding uh, to make that happen, right? Uh, which is really a big deal to put out our capital campaign uh, within there, and so Michelle Jorison, Nancy Baltima, Lisa Haynes, uh, Jeff Haugen, uh, Steve Link, uh, and uh, of course Brock. Thank you. Um, as part of that, and is really part of the structure through uh, Mission Investment, they talked about you know what you need for committees and how to put this together. The third committee of that initial phase was our Communications Committee. Um, that consisted of Jonathan Worry, Eric Voltman, uh, Wendy Mensing, and then Gail Richter. So that group really helped us get information out to all of you, make sure that you were apprised as to what we were doing, how we were planning the cottage visits, those types of things. So uh, that committee of four, you guys are supposed to be standing when yeah. you call your name. So thank you to that committee as well. Uh, and then there's a whole slew of contractors and subcontractors uh, that I, I won't read through the list, uh, but you can see uh, everybody that's there. Uh, if you are part of that, uh, uh, part of those businesses uh, that helped us, like Jeff, I mean, uh, you're sitting right there, so you need to stand up. Uh, uh, if, if there's any water issues, please contact Jeff. Don't call the building. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Jeff, thank you uh, so much for uh, all of your work on there. Uh, but those are a list of all of our, uh, our contractors, subcontractors, uh, to make all of this stuff happen. Uh, and you know, when we talked about bringing all of that together, when you look at uh, the things that we did bring from the old building, there's 11 stained glass windows, 10 of them from the old building, 
uh, one from the original building, if you didn't notice that in the cross in the entryway, that was from the first Martin's Lutheran Church uh, that, uh, that we had in town. Uh, and then, of course, the, the pulpit, the baptismal font, the altar, uh, and all of those resurfaced and, and, uh, and done and dedicated by pure gift uh, by, uh, by the, the families uh, of Pastor Grop. So please, if you guys would please rise. Pastor Grop has uh, family, grandchildren that are here, uh, that, uh, and some watching online. Hi, everybody. Uh, their cousin, Linnea, Pastor Linnea, was going to be here to help dedicate today, but thank you for your wonderful gift. Um, to you. Um, so, um, you listed a whole bunch of people that did stuff. The Cheerful Giving Group, um, did you know that they raised almost $25,000? So it was just, just a hair short uh, of $25,000. But um, there are some groups that, d that put a whole lot of work uh, besides the Cheerful Giving. So if you were part of Cheerful Giving, though, I would like you to stand real quick. If you held an event or were part of those committees to organize some of that stuff, please stand for uh, a quick second. Thank you very much for your time and what you did for us. Uh, in that. So uh, most of the kitchen crew is already standing because they want to serve jelly donuts, or not glazed donuts, uh, cookies and everything else. But thank you guys so much for your work of packing and unpacking uh, our wonderful kitchen. Thank you for that uh, in your time. The Altar Guild crew uh, that packed everything up, helped pick out our pyramids uh, and uh, unpack our stuff to, to serve uh, our wonderful facility. Will you please stand? Uh, come on, Tristan, Tammy, anybody that's on Altar Guild, thank you for, uh, for your work. Uh, for our quilters and anybody that worked on the History Center, uh, the quilting will begin again soon, uh, but please, uh, please stand. Thank you for all your work of loading and unloading uh, all of your stuff. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, to, uh, to the Gunderson family, thank you uh, for modifications uh, that you made to some of our equipment here that will help us in the future and for storing that for us uh, so that nothing rolls away. Our garbage will not be strewn, if you will. Thank you for fixing our dumpster uh, for us. Uh, literally, if we would not have gotten the metal dumpster, I'm going to be all, this is real, this is real. If we wouldn't have got the metal dumpster, we would have had to get one of those circular ones and everybody on 12th Avenue would have hated us because it would have gone straight down there. Thank you so much for your work on that. It is a big, big deal. If you don't have a yard sign yet, the council will be more than happy to greet you with one on your way out the door to stick, uh, to stick in your front yard. Remember, put it past the boulevard. Uh, that's a code and ordinance within the city of Castleton. Uh, Steve Carvel, thank you so much for taking that picture and making those signs possible for us. Uh, greatly appreciated for that work. Uh, we had many installers of cabinets. Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to read those? It starts right here. And uh, everybody, uh, those guys that were, I mean, I thought we were, we were paying them at one point in time because they were here so much. Yeah, that is true. Uh, well, some of them are retired, so of course that helps. So Bob and Mary Christensen obviously have done a great deal of work uh, for us in, in some of the work that they've done. Please rise uh, when your name is called over here. All right, here we are. Um, Evan Anderson. Uh, I know your boss of your regular job, so good thing they're very understanding because you spent a lot of time here at, at Martin's, and so uh, thank you very much for all the things that you've done there and, and making that work as well. Uh, Arlen Vanderbush, uh, for the work that we've done with some of the handrails and getting things uh, done in the education ring, things of that nature. Dave Calderwood uh, was here putting uh, things into the office and helping with uh, those as well. And then uh, one of our council members, Jerome Crandall, uh, was in doing a lot of the work uh, up here in the closets and, and making sure that that happens as well. So thank you very much for those uh, efforts as well. Absolutely. And I, I've got like three more, but off script, but I don't know if you have some more specifics. No, I'm it's, good. Al it's always a danger, of course, when you start naming individuals, but it, it also is important, I think, to understand that um, so many volunteers, and that's why I wanted to name everybody earlier and have you all rise, but for, for me, in the last four years in this process, um, because this particular process really was four years in the making, even though we talked about it being 20 years, 
Um, and so a couple people that I want to give special thanks to in that regard, uh, and one of them is, talk about embarrassing people. Uh, this is a gentleman who really st stays in the background, all, even though he's always a leader and always has uh, ideas. I've gotten the privilege of standing up here for the last year and a half and talking to you about progress and things that happen and, and dedicating this church and really get all the glory of, of the day. Um, but this really started in April of 17 when the council... Uh, under the leadership of Scott Koss. So Scott, uh, right up there, uh, please wave. Everybody knows Scott. Um, what, Scott really... <laughs> Scott really took the council on a strategic planning exercise and really talking about how do we become the church we want to be. And any of you that served on council at that time, it was a lot about the, the planning of getting where we are today. Um, the building itself happened because of all the pre-planning, and, and Scott always stays in the background. I remember at one of these events we had where we announced we were going to build, and, and everybody was excited, and people were thanking, and Rod Brecken went to Scott Cost and said, and don't forget all the work you did to get us to this point, to plan all the meetings, to do the surveys, all those things. So thank you, Scott, for your leadership and guidance through this. Um, that's the stuff that didn't get seen three and four years ago that, that we're culminating in today. Um, the other one, and, and uh, it's kind of a, a team effort, I guess. Um, I really want to thank Pastor Mike and really our entire staff uh, for getting us to this point today. We've been through temporary placements. We've been through lots of moves. We've been through the pandemic. Um, but as you all know, uh, we don't get here today without the changes that had to happen uh, in Martin's Lutheran Church from a cultural perspective, from a vision perspective, and Pastor Mike's leadership and guidance to get us here today uh, it has, has helped us tremendously, but also in the project itself. Um, he is a senior pastor by trade. He is a construction manager by hobby. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, he and I have spent a great deal of time together, and really all the time and effort that you put into this project specifically, we, we need to really thank you that was not part of the job description, and not everybody gets to build a church and, or gets to build a new building for any business, and you think it's get to when you start, and then you think it's what did I sign up for when it's all over. So thank you very much to Pastor Mike and all the work that he's done there. And then because I know that everybody wants to get to the donuts, uh, the last uh, thank you that I have is, is really off script. I can't speak for the Jacobson House. Uh, but I can speak for the Leeds House over the last 18 months. And uh, there's been days that it's been uh, less than pleasant with some of the challenges that we've had. So really, um, I know there are times that I've spent more time with Pastor Mike than I've spent with Karen. So I think Karen Leeds, if you could stand up, Jenny Jacobson, um, it, it's been a roller coaster. And we certainly thank you for your support and, and your help. And you got to hear a lot of uh, grief out of the two of us over the last 18 months. So thank you very much for all that you've done. Absolutely. Thank you, ladies. Really appreciate it. And again, thank you to the entire Martin's Lutheran Church congregation. We are the church. And what a wonderful day we get to celebrate that. So thank you again. Amen. And thanks be to God. I, I, just a short thank you. Thank you to all our musicians. Will you all stand up? I mean, talk about transitions and what they got to do. Okay. Thank you for what you do for us. Truly amazing. Well, with that, Pastor Keith, will you do our blessing? I invite you to please stand as you're able. And again, as is often our pattern as we leave worship, we send you with a blessing, a song, and maybe something for your tummy. Receive these words as you go. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. We sing, Love God.
and peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Bishop Larry, thank you.